Good evening and thank you for joining us. Well, last night we had a story about uh, lacrosse happening here in the Border City mm -hmm. and now we've got some up in the Lakeland as well. Yeah, of. that's right. It's nice we have Clayton Brown. He actually got out and was able to share this story. So we have two lacrosse stories for you. Our great story last night from Aaron Strack and then Clayton talked about the Lakeland region and how the, the uh, sport is trying to grow there. Fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. we'll look forward to that in sports. And Gerard, what are we looking forward to in the forecast? Well, we're looking forward to another great evening. Last evening it was just about right, so we're getting another great evening again. Let's see what it's looking like. Eh? 18 is where we're sitting presently. And I tell you what, we got to 19 today. It happened just at about 3 o'clock, so that's all good. 24% is that humidity. The wind's out of the southeast, gusting a bit now at anywhere from 28 to 41 kilometers an hour. And as we compare the picture for in the Lakeland region, what we're seeing is a 20, which was achieved at just 4 o'clock this afternoon. A bit more cloud cover. The Battle of Fords enjoying the better of the sunshine as usual. Got to 16 at 3 o'clock, so sitting pretty at a plus 16. Several fires broke out last night around the border city, and fire crews were quick to respond. The fires erupted in close proximity to the CN Railroad tracks. Apparently it was possibly uh, started by a passing freight train going through town. They had fires on the east side of Lloydminster in the rural municipality of Britannia. The fires stretched out as far as the Husky Upgrader, which made things difficult for firefighters to combat the blaze. The distances away from the fire hydrants and the area was really inaccessible out on the east end of town, so they had to stretch a lot of hose to get to it, so we used a lot of rakes, shovels, um, pump cans to start controlling it and then kept running the trucks back to the hydrants. And due to the extremely dry state of the ground, the Lloydminster Fire Department offers this piece of advice. If it's really windy outside, uh, just be careful, even with uh, fire pits in town. Um, make sure they're properly constructed and that you have an available means of extinguishing it should it get out of control. And those dry conditions are prompting the County of Vermilion River to issue a partial fire ban. That ban started today. Residents are no longer allowed to burn in barrels and fire permits will no longer be issued. A $300 fine could result if conditions of fire permits and fire bans are not followed. Supervised, contained recreational fires are permitted. Officials are reminding that all allowed fires must be totally extinguished. Locking your vehicle may save you time and money from replacing valuables or repairing damages. The Lloydminster RCMP have launched their Lock It or Lose It program, advising the public to be sure doors are locked and keep valuables out of sight. Over the last month, the Lloydminster RCMP reports there have been 41 thefts from motor vehicles. Like today, plus 19, 20, and all summer, uh, there's more citizens on the road uh, later into the evening, and that's when the vehicles are usually getting broken into. And Corporal Nelson says there are ways to help prevent this from happening. We advise the public to keep their doors locked uh, in their vehicles, not to display any value, valuable items such as GPS, iPods, uh, satellite radios, anything of that nature, so people can see them as they walk by. Authorities are doing what they can to catch the culprits. However, they allow this type of crime will persist. It's always going to happen in the city and uh, the police are on patrols every night uh, in every neighborhood trying to prevent this from happening. However, it still does occur. The Central Suites Hotel was the site of the annual downtown cleanup breakfast organized by Streetscapes. The purpose was for Lloydminster's business community to network and get energized before heading out to beautify our streets. Robert Buffum has more. Coffee was poured and a hearty hot breakfast was plentiful as members of the business community gathered for a good cause. We invite the businesses to come out to, uh, you know, a great breakfast for a good price and, you know, we hand out bags and gloves and that and then on the way back to work, you know, they can pick up stuff around their place of business. I think it's very important. It certainly speaks a lot for Lloydminster. Because you know what it's like when you go to some community and you see garbage, we all probably say, they need to clean up. We're going to clean up around uh, our business and uh, walk around the community and get involved. This is our first year doing this, so we're a little excited about trying something different and helping out and get involved in the community. After fueling up, they were off to work in the streets. Now we go clean up. Dusty work, but done on a full stomach. And with this spring cleanup now well underway, Streetscape expects these sidewalks to be pristine for Street Fest in June. Robert Buffum, New Cap News. Officials at the Bar Colony Heritage Cultural Centre want your input on the future of their facilities. Right now they're creating a redevelopment plan and looking for community feedback. If you're interested in submitting your opinion on the museum's exhibits, 
They're holding a public meeting tonight. Officials say no topic is off limits and every exhibit is up for discussion. We want to gather as much input as we can um, to help us uh, envision the future of the Burr Colony Heritage Cultural Centre. He has allotted $85,000 to go to the plan. The consulting company, Lord Cultural Resources, has almost 2,000 projects in its portfolio, but they maintain the most successful projects are the ones the community takes ownership of. This is their Heritage Cultural Centre and it's got a lot to offer to the community. It's a major community asset. We, are, uh, re we will be really excited to hear people's ideas and gather as much feedback as we can. The public meeting starts at 7 o'clock at the Bar Colony Centre. I'm Whitney Stinson from around the region joining me right now. Whitney, and I guess that story ties in perfectly with uh, the show that's going to be on tonight. Yeah, exactly. We have uh, Brad, Brad King, who we just saw on screen there with Lord Cultural Resources. Now, what you don't see in the story is how much work actually goes into a redevelopment plan and how much behind the scenes work there is to really revamp a museum like ours. And so he's coming on with uh, another one of his vice presidents uh, tonight. That's 730 on CITL.